Hey guys, uh, second day of learning all about fish. Um, today we're going to be talking about like just some general or not general, but some more specific things about fish, some physiology, caring for them, um, and things that they require in their tank to be able to live a long, happy life. Um, so in the remote learning guide, we are, today we're gonna go through slides 31 through 44, not a ton. Um, and then you are gonna have a fish equipment assignment that I'm gonna post to Edmodo and I'm gonna kind of walk through with you guys. Um, moving to the PowerPoint, which should also be posted on Edmodo for you guys if you need it. Um, if it'll load, it is kind of a longer PowerPoint just because of all the fish breeds care da, 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 that is in there. Um, so fish physiology, um, for sure there's a lot more going on with fish I think than we really think about at first. Um, first fish don't just, don't just swim. Fish actually have to drink water. Um, even though they're living in water, it's weird. It's something that you never really thought about. Like I never thought about it. Um, in order for, it, for fish to be able to swim the way that they're supposed to, they have to have proper levels of salt and water in their body. And this goes for freshwater fish and saltwater fish. Um, the concentration of salt to water affects their ability to be able to swim and where they're gonna be able to swim at. Um, if you, you should have learned about it in biology, um, osmosis. Osmosis is the process where water flows from a low concentration to a high concentration. So it kind of goes like almost like against the laws of nature because normally you think that it should flow from high to low. Like that's the normal natural way that things go. Gravity, high to low. Osmosis is flip where water from low areas flows to high areas. And that's just, that's what osmosis is. That's what osmosis does. Um, freshwater, the difference between freshwater and saltwater fish is that freshwater fish don't need to drink water because their body salt concentration is already higher than the water. So they have more salt in their body than in the water, which makes sense. It's fresh water. It doesn't have a lot of salt because they're freshwater fish. So because they have the salt in their body, they're able to swim wherever they want, however they want. They don't have to drink in water in order to be able to survive. Yeah, they probably still drink some water, but it's not something they have to consistently and consecutively do in order to be able to live. Um, saltwater fish, on the other hand, they have less salt in their body than in the water around them. So because of this, they have to keep drinking water to keep from dehydrating. This is the reason that you can't keep saltwater fish in a freshwater tank and vice versa. Because of that salt concentration that's in their body compared to what's supposed to be in their environment. It's because of this. Um, saltwater fish, they have to drink water, otherwise they're going to dehydrate because they have less salt in their body than they do in the environment. Salt is something that dries things out. Native Americans, people in early times, they use salt to put on the meat that they killed to preserve it so that it would last a longer time. It dehydrated it so that it wouldn't go bad. Salt water does basically the same thing. That's why we can't drink salt water and stay hydrated because there's so much salt in there that it will dehydrate our body. So the fish, they have to continue drinking salt water because that's, that's what they have. They have to continue drinking salt water and filtering that salt out of their body. Otherwise, they're gonna be dehydrated. Um, so fish are also classified based on where in the fish tank or the water world that they eat and live. You've got your bottom feeders or your bottom dwellers. This is like catfish or barbs. They live on the bottom of the floor, of the tank, whatever it is, excuse me, because nature and evolution have said this is where you belong. 
So because this is where they've always lived, their mouths have adapted from being straight in the front of their face, kind of like ours are, to being on the bottom because they're swimming on the bottom. It's easy for them to eat if they can just, if their little mouths are already on the bottom, they can just pick up whatever it is they want to eat. They don't have to literally go stand on their head to be able to get food because their mouth and evolution and nature has said, your mouth needs to be on the bottom. I'm making your life easier. Um, middle feeders live in the middle of the tank or the middle of the water column. Because they're in the middle, they can eat from the top, they can eat from the bottom, but they're gonna have to try to catch their food going. They're either gonna have to catch their food coming down and they're gonna have to swim up to get it, or they're gonna have to catch their food on the way as it's sinking past them and they're gonna have to eat it. Because of this, their mouths are straight forward and they have to move their body depending on where it is that they're trying to get catch their food from. Top feeders are fish that live at the top of the tank. These are the fish that when you feed them, they're gonna come up and they're gonna grab the food right off the top. Um, because of this, their mouth are gonna be, it'll still be kind of in the front of their face, but it's gonna be almost turned upwards. So they can kind of gulp and grab the food from the top. Um, typically top feeders, their bodies are gonna be like longer, skinnier, um, and they're gonna be pretty fast fish, all things considered, because if they weren't in a tank, if they are a fish that you can naturally find in the wild, they're not gonna have people just sprinkling fish food on the top of the water. They're gonna be catching things that land on the top of the water. And typically this is gonna be like bugs. Bugs don't really like water for the most part. They're gonna try to get away, get off the water and they're gonna move pretty quickly. So top feeders, evolution has said, if you wanna survive, you gotta be quick. So these are quick fish. They dart here and there so that they can try to get their food. They've gotta beat their food so their food doesn't get off landing and get away from them. And then there are some fish that don't have a preference of what part of the tank that they hang out in. They'll hang out at the top, they'll hang out at the bottom, they'll hang out in the middle, they don't care. They'll hang out at any part, they'll eat at any part. Goldfish are our prime example. This is part of what makes goldfish good pets, is that they're gonna, they can live anywhere, they can eat anywhere in their tank and they're gonna be fine. Um, fish respiration, fish do have to breathe. Um, they use their gills to breathe and what they do is typically what they're gonna do is they're gonna open their mouth. They're gonna open their mouth and when they open their mouth it creates a vacuum and it pulls water in. That water goes through their body. If it's food, it's gonna get eaten. If it's just water, the water is gonna be filtered out because they've got those gills on the side. Um, so that when the water is drawn in through the mouth and then the mouth is closed so that it can't go back out the same way it came, the water is forced into the pharynx, which is gonna be part of the throat. It's for fishes, for us too, but it's weird to think of fishes with throats. Um, and then it's gonna go past, and then it's gonna go out the gills and it's just gonna be brought right through. Any of the dissolved oxygen that's in the water is gonna be taken into the blood. Think about when we learn about respiration with animals and we learn about how blood flows through the body, how it flows to the heart, the oxygenated blood versus oxygenated blood. The dissolved oxygen is caught there and as the blood is flowing through the fish's body, it's gonna catch it, it's gonna catch that oxygen and take it to wherever it needs to be to keep that fish literally alive. Any CO2 is gonna also be released from the gills. The gills are basically like our nose. We breathe in through our nose, we breathe out through our nose. Um, some fish, and if there's not a lot of oxygen in the tank, will come up to the surface of the air or surface of the tank and they're gonna gulp air in through their mouth. If you see fish in your tank, that are doing this, that means that they do not have enough oxygen in their tank and they're literally having to come up and try to breathe in air. Um, when this happens, rather than the air, because there's no water there, the air isn't filtered out through their gills. 
because it's just air. Only water is filtered out through their gills. Because the air isn't filtered out through their gills, its only other place to go is through the digestive system. So it's almost like this fish is eating air. The air goes through the digestive system and any of it that's oxygen is gonna be absorbed in the small intestine where the blood is gonna come through and it's gonna pick up that oxygen. It's kind of weird, but in this case, the oxygen and the air acts a lot like if the fish were literally eating it, if it were literally food. If the fish were eating food, the food would flow through the digestive system and when it got to the small intestine, it will be broken down these little tiny nutrients where the blood can come through and it can grab these little nutrients and take it to wherever it needs. Except in this case, it's actually it's oxygen that the blood is grabbing and carrying to wherever it needs to go. Um, so fish fins, different fish can have different fins. The fins can look different. They can be different sizes. Um, they can be different, like almost like textures or they can be like, they can be really sharp. They can be soft or they can be spiny, like a bunch of little pokes. Um, bony fish, so fish that have like, are they known for having a lot of bones? They're typically gonna have rayed fins where when you see this, they've got all these little pokes, They're almost like little spines that are covered up, but when the fish flexes them out, they stand up almost like a porcupine. If you ever caught like brim, um, which are like a really, really common freshwater fish, when you catch the brim, you have to hold them by their lip and then you have to smooth down their spines. Because when they come out and you touch them, those spines go up like a porcupine and they stay straight up and they'll stab you. You're not gonna die, you might bleed a little bit. Basically, it's not gonna feel good. It's a mechanism that says, hopefully, if something's trying to eat me, when it bites down on me, it's gonna get stabbed. It's gonna get scared enough to drop me and I can get back into the water. So some rays can be like really sharp and really spiny, but the fins are gonna be mostly flexible. Um, the fins are really important for the fish because the fins are what allow the fish to be able to move. It allows them to be able to maintain balance, pick a direction, decide how fast they wanna go. Um, most fish have at least one fin along their back, a dorsal fin. So think of like the dorsal fin on a dolphin. The dorsal fin on a dolphin looks a lot different than the dorsal fin on this puffer fish. They'll have one fin under their tail. This is called the anal fin because their anus is right here. And then the tail fin or the caudal fin because it is on the caudal means the back end of the animal. So the caudal fin is the fin that is on the back of the fish. Um, they can have other fins. A lot of times they're gonna have pectoral fins, which are the two fins that are on the side of them. Um, I don't think you can see it when I move them. Yeah, when I move, you can't see it. But the two fins, whoops, these. The two fins that are on the side that help, these help them to be able to move, to help them to be able to maintain direction. Um, they can have, a lot of different fins. But these are the main ones that most fish will have. And they can be all different sizes, all different structures, different functions. So when you're buying a fish, um, there's five main things that you want to consider. Um, the type of fish aquarium. And this is like when you're considering purchasing tanks. At this point, you've already considered what kind of fish you want to buy. Now you got to figure out what kind of tank you want to buy. Um, what type of tank? Do you want to do a glass tank or a plastic tank? Glass is going to be cheaper, or glass is going to be more expensive, but it's going to be easier to clean. Plastic is going to be cheaper, but it's going to get gross pretty easily. How big do you want the tank? If you've got a little beta fish, you can get a tank this big, and it'll be okay. But if you, you can get... 100 gallon tanks. These are huge tanks. Because fish need a lot more room than we're, we really kind of consider. Um, so the size is also really going to depend on what kind of fish you want. This is where you have to consider what kind of fish you're going to get. 
How much space do these fish need? How many of these fish are you going to have to get? If you get fish that live in schools and they have to be in schools, then you're gonna have to factor in how much space 15 of them are gonna need. Um, which shape do you want your tank? Do you want just like a classic rectangle? Do you want one of those like half circular dome ones that like stick on a wall? Um, do you want your classic um, circular tank that sits down? They make all different tanks and all different shapes and sizes. Um, and then what kind of species tank do you want? What kind of fish are you purchasing? Are you gonna do fresh water? Are you gonna do salt water? Are you gonna do like tr crazy tropical fish? Like what kind of fish are you gonna get? Has to be considered when you're thinking about what kind of tank you're gonna get. Um, so this chart right here is really important um, because this chart right here helps you to determine what size tank you need for what kind of fish. If your fish is considered tropical fish, again, you can only, you get to do one of these. You get to do all tropical fish or all cold water fish or all marine fish. Tropical fish, salt water. Cold water fish, fresh water. Marine, salt water. Not necessarily tropical. Um, when you're figuring out how much space your fish needs, if you're doing tropical fish aquariums, then for every one inch that fish is, it's gonna need 10 inches of space. So if you've got a fish that's two inches long, it's gonna need 20 square inches of space just for that one little fish. This is why people get huge fish tanks. Because even though you've got little fish, they need a lot of space to move around. You can't just shove them all in this little tiny tank because you're going to have problems. The tank is not going to be able to survive because it's over the carrying capacity. Um, tropical fish tend to require less space than your cold freshwater fish and way less space for your regular saltwater fish. Fish require a lot of space and we don't ever think about it. Um, you're gonna want a tank that has some kind of power filter on it, some kind of electric motor so that it keeps oxygen flowing through the tank. Those bubbles that we see coming up in tanks, that's bringing oxygen into the tank. That's keeping oxygen in the tank so that your fish can breathe. So, yeah, those cute little classic circular fish tanks, they're really, really cute, but they don't have any oxygen flowing through. The only oxygen that that fish is getting is the oxygen that is being grabbed by the water surface. That fish is not living a great life. It's literally having to come to the surface to try to breathe. So keep in mind what kind of tank you want. Highly, 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 highly recommend that whatever kind of tank you get, you get one with an electric motor so that your water can be oxygenated for your fish. Um, you have to pick out a filtration system. Filtration systems are really important for picking up anything, kind of like trash collection. Any food that isn't eaten so that it doesn't sink to the bottom and get nasty. Any like dissolved materials, any feces, any like substances that shouldn't be in there, the filtration system should capture it. Um, you can have three different kinds of filtration systems. You can do a mechanical filtration system where the waste is collected by different filtration systems and it goes to an external filter box. You can do chemical filtration where you put in, um, typically it's gonna be like activated charcoal you put that in and the activated charcoal soaks up any of those dissolved materials or chemicals to get rid of it. Or you can do biological filtration where you use bacteria in your tank. And this isn't just like, oh, I'm gonna let some algae grow on my tank, it's cool. Um, this is where you use bacteria to feed on any substances like ammonia that fish excrete. Ammonia comes out in fish urine. You don't wanna let ammonia build up because ammonia takes up oxygen. If the ammonia is taking up oxygen, your fish aren't getting oxygen. 
So biological filtration systems will use bacteria to get the ammonia that the fish are excreting in their urine and during respiration, um, or also from decaying matter. Oh, um, and so the reason that you can use bacteria is because the bacteria, think of like photosynthesis. Photosynthesis takes in carbon dioxide, gives us oxygen. Biological filtration systems, the bacteria is taking in the ammonia, the stuff that we don't want, and it's giving us back nitrogen, a harmless form of nitrogen. And that's all good. Um, air pumps are really, really important because you want to make sure your fish can breathe. Air pumps circulate water from the bottom of the tank so that it flows up because bubbles flow up. They always say like if you if you're worried that you're drowning or you're lost in a in water and you don't know like which way is up, which way is down, to breathe water out and see which way the bubbles go. Because the bubbles are always gonna flow to the surface. So if you're turned around, like I've seen, I hate saying it, but twilight. There's a scene where Bella like gets dumped in the water. She's drowning. She doesn't know which way's up, which way's down. She breathes out water, and that water, the bubbles flow up, so she can tell which way is up, which way does she need to swim. Because I mean, honestly, you get really deep in the water, you don't see where the sunlight is. You don't know which way's up, which way's down. It's completely disorienting because everything looks the same. So breathing out that little bit of water to see where bubbles go, really, really important. Um, the air pump needs to be at the bottom of the tank so that the bubbles can flow up so that oxygenation starts at the bottom and continues flowing up. You're not just oxygenating the top because if you oxygenate just the top, that's where the oxygen is going to stay. Um, uh, that's basically it. Other equipment that you're going to need, um, a hydrometer. The hydrometer measures how much salt is in your water. So if you've got saltwater fish, this is probably pretty important. Um, a heater. When we talked about fish breeds last class, we talked about the temperature threshold that fish can live in. Some of them, they have a threshold of like three degrees. Some of them have a threshold of like 30 degrees. So that heater and thermostat are going to be really, really important for making sure that that water is at whatever temperature it needs to be for your fish. Um, other things you want to include in your tank, gravel or sand, plants, decorative stones. Um, your fish might want a light. You want a dip net so that you can collect your fish out so that you can clean out their tank. And then any other decorative materials. Um, the decorative materials and stuff can be more for you, but like some fish, fish really like, they like variety. They like variety in their food, they like variety in their tank. They get bored very, very easily. So making sure they have all these different things in their tank will help to keep them entertained. Some fish also, they are naturally prey fish. They want to hide. So they're gonna want places where they can go and they can hide and they can feel safe. If you just have an empty tank, they're going to be very, very scared, and they're probably going to die due to increased stress levels. So you want somewhere for them to be able to hide, somewhere for them to be able to go. Um, maintaining your fish tank. This is, this is the reason we don't have fish in my classroom. Um, so when you're cleaning out your fish tank, something that you want to do is let your water sit out for several hours, like 12 to 24 hours, so that the water is all good to go. You boil it so that the water is the way it needs to be. If you need fresh water, you want to boil it so that there's nothing coming from your sink tap going into your fish tank. Um, let it sit out for a little while, definitely at least long enough to cool down because you don't want to cook your fish. Um, and then daily, you want to make sure that the heater is working, that the temperature is good for your fish, that there's water or that there's oxygen flowing through the fish tank. It's aerated. Um, if you have any fish die, you want to obviously get them out as soon as you can. Um, every week, check the water level. Water is going to slowly go down. Check the water level, add water back as need be. 
and then every month clean out a quarter to a fifth of the water so that you're not completely, you can shock a fish. If you completely take their tank, dump all the water out and place it with new water, it can cause them to go into shock. So every month you wanna take out a quarter to a fifth of the water and replace it with fresh. Um, take any plants out, clean them because they're gonna collect algae a lot. Clean, excuse me, clean the bottom of the fish tank so there's nothing, there's no decaying materials that maybe the filtration system didn't catch, um, all of that stuff. And then factors that can increase um, stress or ammonia in your fish tank is your filtration system not working. It's not collecting waste materials. It's not collecting feces. It's not collecting uneaten food. And this is another reason to not overfeed your fish. Um, the filter hasn't been changed. The water hasn't been changed monthly. Or you have too many fish in your tank. And you're simply, it's simply that your filtration system cannot keep up because your fish tank is over the carrying capacity. You have too many fish in your tank to be able to filter out everything in a timely manner. When it comes to feeding your fish, try to vary their food so they don't get bored. Every time, every time you go to the store to buy fish food, buy them something a little bit different. Um, some fish really like live food. Um, some will eat freeze-dried food, some will eat frozen food. You wanna feed your fish two to three times a day. Kinda of like people, kinda of like your other animals. You wanna feed them a couple times a day. But you only wanna feed them for a couple minutes. You wanna shake the shaker, let them eat the food. When it's gone, you can give them a little bit more and you just kinda of keep doing that for three to five minutes. As soon as they stop eating whatever food is up there, you stop feeding them because they're not gonna go back and they're not gonna eat it. Literally, at that, if it's fish flakes, literally at that point, it's soggy. They're not going to eat soggy food. Fish are kind of bougie like that. Um, if you're buying them flakes, flakes are really good for little tiny fish that are only a couple inches long because they have little tiny mouths and the flakes are really thin and easy for them to eat. If you have bigger fish, then you can start feeding them pellets. Um, the pellets are bigger. They have more nutrition for them. They're going to float longer at the top without going bad, but your smaller fish aren't really going to be able to eat them. Some fish will eat like brine shrimp, they'll eat earthworms, um, stuff like that can be good treats for some fish if that's a part of their diet. Um, the bigger your fish get, the bigger food that you can feed them. Like my family, we have a pond at our house and it's full of like bass and catfish and all of these freshwater fish. They're big enough, like some of these catfish are like three feet long. These fish are big enough that we can feed them whole pieces of dog food because fish will eat dog food. Um, they're big enough that their pellets, it's dog food, whole big old pieces of dog food. So for your assignment, um, I'm gonna pull up the actual assignment rather than just reading off of here. Um, so it's similar to the last assignment. It kind of picks up where the last assignment left off. Um, so you gave your parents your list of fish that you want, but they also want more information before they approve you. Um, they want to know about like the tank and equipment that you're going to need for the fish. They want to know, do you want glass or plastic tanks? What size tank do you get? You're going to do a little bit of math here. Based on the fish that you gave, how big of a tank are you going to be able, are you going to have to get? What kind of filtration system are you going to be purchasing? Mechanical, biological, or chemical? How much is the equipment going to cost? Pick out some things to put in your tank, figurines, plants, what kind of gravel or sand do you want? And then your parents want to see a cleaning schedule because they said they've already put their foot down. They're not cleaning this fish tank for you. So they want to know what your schedule for cleaning is going to be so that your fish have a clean tank. And then what kind of feed primarily are you going to be giving your fish? Um, for this question, you can just include like kind of like a description. If you want to include a link, if you want to go that far, that's completely fine. If you just want to say like, 
SpongeBob SquarePants, Squidward's house as figurine number one. I'm cool with that. It's however you want to do it. Um, but let me know what it is that you guys need help with. We're getting near the end of this unit and therefore the end of the class, which makes me really sad. But Tuesday, Thursdays, we'll do Zoom, hop on, say hello. I miss you guys. And let me know what it is that I can help you with. Bye, guys.